largest of seven hills in Florida's capital city, covering every corner of the Big Bend. This is the award-winning News 20 at 5 Live. Good evening and welcome to a special edition of News 20 at 5. I'm Tawanda Robinson. And I'm Joy Dukes. The Northwood Center has come under fire after water damage, bat feces, raw sewage, and more prompted 84 people to file a complaint against the state office complex. Several employees recently fell ill and were sent home due to contamination. The complaint alleges that the owners, including Northwood Associates, Ajax Investments, and Talcor, knew about the contamination after the building sustained damage back in 2006. A driver has been arrested for a DUI after slamming into the Mellow Mushroom restaurant on Pensacola Street. According to Tallahassee Police, 20-year-old Jason Penrod hit a car that was stopped in the turning lane and kept going before crashing into the restaurant wall. Though no one was injured, the building was seriously damaged. Police are still investigating and asking any witnesses to call 850-891-4200. The Florida prepaid college plan deadline is approaching and with plans as low as $46 a month, it can be a viable option for many families. The program allows families to choose from five college saving plans by paying a monthly fee, which happens to be about 50% lower than they were two years ago. Families are encouraged to take advantage of the low cost plans before the deadline. For more information, visit myfloridaprepaid.com. And speaking of education, Former President Bill Clinton took to the podium at Florida A&M University to encourage student support for Gwen Graham, a candidate who he says will make college easier. Multimedia journalist Donovan Long has the story. It's a very close congressional race right now in Florida, but Gwen Graham may have gained a few more votes by having former President Bill Clinton at her side. Gwen's for equal pay for equal work, for raising minimum wage, for reforming the student loan laws to make it easier for you to stay in college, and her opponent isn't. He traveled all the way to Florida A&M University to highlight reasons why people should vote for Graham. One of them involved her stance on education. The, the partisan divide over whether we're going to cut the cost of college and make it easier to repay and let people repay their loans as a small fixed percentage of their income is a very big deal. For that reason alone, every person on this campus ought to vote for Gwen Graham for Congress. Clinton also urged voters to the polls to support Graham's attempt to end the government gridlock in Washington. According to the Congressional Research Service, Democrats control the Senate by having an additional eight seats, and the Republicans control the House by having 28 seats. But if Graham wins the congressional seat for Florida, FAMU student Maurice said it will significantly help President Obama. Having the House, uh, the Senate, and the White House would be ideal so that, you know, the president can actually push forth his agenda. Right now, of course, we have a Democratic president, but he can't really execute what he, need, what he wants to do without the support from Congress. But regardless of one's party affiliation, Andrew Gillum says the most important part of election season is to vote. Uh, it is the one exercise that we have that makes all of us equal. For News 20 at 5, I'm Donovan Long. And for the first time in 11 years, Amtrak rolled through the capital city. Fired up! Local officials urge citizens to advocate for the rail system to once again be a part of Tallahassee. An Amtrak report estimates that the reestablishing the service from New Orleans to Orlando would cost between six and fourteen million dollars. Annual ridership would bring around 153,000 passengers. Local officials, including City Commissioner Scott Maddox and Nancy Miller, rode the train into the station. County Commissioner Bill Proctor noted the beauty of the Gulf Coast. Coming up on News 20 at 5, we'll be taking a look at President Obama's trip to Cuba as the first sitting president in nearly 90 years to visit the country. And Bernie Sanders is closing the gap between his campaign and Hillary Clinton's as he takes major wins in Western state caucuses. Stay tuned, you're watching News 20 at 5. 